Hello, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. I was recently asked about making grids in Photoshop, so that's what we're going to cover here. Now, I don't know whether the person wanted to print off the grids or not, so I'm covering all the bases and doing both. A grid that does print, that's the big picture on the left, and a grid that doesn't print, and those are on the right. A difference between the two is the ones on the right are made with guides, whereas the one on the left obviously isn't. Uh, one on the top here is a rule of thirds and that's what we're going to cover first and then we'll move on to the grid and then we'll move on to the printable grid. Let's open up our image here. I've got it tucked away behind. Now let's make this rule of thirds. Now the best way to make any guide is to go to view and then new guide and it is precise then. You can go onto the ruler and pull out a guide but this is far more precise. As you can see, it's asking me how many pixels across I'd like my first guide to be. Now, I don't know how wide my picture is, so this isn't much use to me right now. So I'm going to cancel that out and go up into the menu and right click. And then I can change how it's measured out. In this case, for the rule of thirds, I'd like it percent because that's going to make it much easier for me. I have view new guide and now it's changed to percent and I can go 33% and up comes my first guide and view new guide 66% and there's my two vertical vertical guides view new guide this time 33 horizontal okay and view new guide 66 horizontal and there we are, our rule of thirds, as easy as that. Now to get rid of them, I'll just go view and clear guides. Now this isn't so important these days because in CS5 and in later editions of Camera Raw, uh, we can have a rule of thirds actually within the cropping tool as well. So it's not quite so important, but it's still handy. Handy enough that I've got an action. All I did was record that. See, I've got it thirds. Just click and up come my guides okay let's go view and clear guides so this time I want a 10 by 10 grid so let's go up to the ruler again right click and this time we do need it in pixels because we want a 10 by 10 pixel grid and it's just a case of going in new guide 10 pixels view new guide 20 pixels and so on and so on and so forth and then you'd want to go view new guide horizontal 10 pixels and then 20 pixels and so on and so on and so on very laborious now you can do i'm just going to clear those guides you can do an action for that which is what i've got here input grid distance in pixels and if i play that there we go i'm actually doing 20 pixels here i could change that to 10 um, let's go 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, it's even boring when you've got an action running. I should have made this a lot smaller, shouldn't I? Uh, how far have we got? 60, 70. I can't remember how many of these I put in. All this is is just repeated over and over again. There we go. Now we've reached the... Uh, the end of the vertical and now I can start putting in the horizontal and you can see it's slowly building up up there in the top right hand side I'll zoom in there so you can see it happening and I'll keep on typing and there we go okay so nothing really very interesting there 50 60 70 and obviously if I wanted to cover the whole image with this it would take quite some time quite laborious okay let's clear those guides view and clear guides so let's make our own grid and let's see if we can do that a bit easier all right so i'm going to do it first of all i'm going to create a new layer and then make sure that my foreground is black and my background is white if it isn't i'm going to press d i'm going to press d anyway just to make sure then I'm going to control and backspace, that's command and backspace on the Mac, just to fill that with a background color, which is white. Then I'm going to zoom right in, 
go up to my top. I'm just holding the space bar here to zoom. Let's take this and move it up. There we go. That's a bit easier. Okay. And just use the space bar again. And now I'm going to make sure I'm in pixels and take this across to 10. Now, how accurate do you think I'm being? I don't think I'm very accurate at all. Let's clear that guide. And let's try again with a new guide. 10 pixels. New guide. Horizontal, 10 pixels. Then I know I'm absolutely spot on. Now, when I was trying this out earlier on, I was pulling them out by hand. And I can tell you that I was very rarely getting them exactly on 10 pixels. It was 9 point something or 10 point something. It was an absolute nightmare. So always good just to type it in. Then you know you're bang on. Now I want this to be one pixel wide around the square. Oops, excuse me, uh, around the square. So I'm going to use this single row marquee tool. And I'm just going to plop it down on the corner. And then using Alt and Backspace, I can fill that with black. Control D to deselect and then use the single column marquee tool and click on the top corner there and then again hold backspace to fill that one in with black and Control D. Now all I want is a 10 by 10 grid not the whole of those lines so let's put a marquee around that. Now actually 10 by 10 is there. It takes in another pixel around the guide there. This guide is onto the left hand side of that pixel, whereas the horizontal guide is on top of the pixel. So a 10 by 10 grid would take in that extra space there. However, when we come to make our grid, the right hand side of the square will be made up from the left hand portion of the square next to it, and the bottom will be made from the top of the square underneath it, which means we don't need either of those, so we can come in exactly to the guides there. I'm going to go to edit and define pattern and I'm going to call this one pixel 10 by 10 pixel square and press OK. Now I can deselect that and I can get rid of that layer just to make sure that I'm working nice and clean. OK now a new layer and again, fill it with white, control and backspace. And I'm going to double click on this layer to bring up the layer effects and go to the pattern overlay. If I click this downward pointing arrow here, I can pull up, you see I've already been experimenting, can you? Uh, I'm gonna pull up the last pattern that came along, which is the one pixel 10 by 10 pixel square. And it even tells me that it's a 10 by 10 uh, pattern. So I click on that. Now I need to get rid of the white from this pattern so I'm going to put this into multiply blend mode. I'll drop out the white and keep the black and I click OK. But still the white's there and that's because the layer itself is white. So let's drop the white and keep the black by putting that into a multiply and Bob's your uncle. There is our grid. If I just zoom out a little bit and use hand tool to come along you can see it's quite a good little grid. Now I could do that in any size I liked. I could, I could put anything I wanted to. In fact, let's get rid of that one. And you can see that I recorded some of these as a grid and I even made a one pixel 40 by 40 squares. Let's play that one. Much easier to see. So it's 40, 40 pixels by 40 pixels. I could quite as easily have made it two or three pixels in width. But don't forget to do the maths on the right and the bottom as well. OK, um, finally, if I wanted to go into the layer styles here, I could come into my pattern overlay and you'll see here that I've got a percentage. So it's a scale of 100 percent. I just put that down to 50 percent. I'm actually down to the 20 by 20. If I went down to 25, then I'm back to my 10 by 10. But you'll notice that the lines get a little bit, well, shoddy, want for a better word. So if you are going to use this technique, I would suggest that you made a separate action for each one. Let's go back to 100% and you see the lines come up nice and crisp. It's all very helpful if you're making a cross, cross stitch pattern or something like that. 
Okay, and there we are. Now, I should warn you that, there we go, you might be able to see that there seems to be a line missing across here. Now, I've just double clicked the hand tool, which makes the image fit into the window, and it's actually come out at 48.91%. Now, any odd percent will squeak, go and make your pattern a bit ski with. So don't worry about that, just uh, put it somewhere nice. Let's go to 50%. And you see it fits in nicely, just those odd point percents make it all nice again. Okay, there we go. Don't forget to record everything as an action, makes things a lot easier if you want to do it time and time again. I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. Thank you very much for bearing with me.